Welcome to this lecture about the hotelings T-square. Note that this lecture assumes that you first have watched the video about MANOVA. In this lecture we have looked at the basics of hotelings T-square, as well as its calculations based on some simple example data. Before we look at the hotelings T-square, let's first recall the ANOVA and the MANOVA from the previous lectures. Remember that ANOVA is a statistical method that can be used to compare the means of two or more independent groups. In this example, we like to compare the mean tumor size of independent patients with prostate cancer on three different treatments, A, B and C. However, when we have only two groups to compare, we can test if there is a difference in the means by using either an unpaired t-test or an ANOVA. Both methods will result in the same p-value for two-sided test. When we like to check if there is a difference in the mean values between the treatments for two or more dependent variables, we know from the previous lecture that MANOVA is appropriate to use. In this example, we can use MANOVA to test if there is a difference in the tumor size and prostate-specific antigen concentration in the patients on the three different treatments. When we have two or more dependent variables, but only two independent groups to compare, we can either use a two-sample Hotelings T-square test or MANOVA. The two-sample Hotelings T-square test can therefore be seen as the multivariate counterpart of the two-sample independent T-test. In comparison to the MANOVA, the test statistic of the Hotelings T-square is simpler to calculate. To explain how the Hotelings T-square works, let's focus on the following example where we like to compare two groups, here defined by green and orange color. In this case, we see that the two groups show a clear separation when plotted based on the two variables x and y. Whereas this data shows there is an overlap between the two groups. In this example, we see that the Euclidean distance between the two centroids is the same in these two example datasets. However, the Hamalanubis distance is much larger in this case because the cloud of data points is much further away from each other in this plot compared to this plot where the cloud of data points overlap. It is therefore more likely that the two centroids are significantly different in this dataset compared to the dataset to the right. We'll here use the following fictive example data to compute the Hotelings T-square. This is the exact same dataset as we used in the videos about LDA and MANOVA. This column shows the concentration of the C-reactive protein in blood of 12 patients that have entered the hospital, whereas this column shows the body temperature of the same patients at the same time point. This column shows whether the patients had been infected by a virus or bacteria. The CRP and the body temperature have been measured for six individuals with a viral infection and six individuals with bacterial infection. Our aim is to test if there is a difference in the mean CRP concentration and body temperature between patients with a viral and bacterial infection. These bars represent the mean CRP concentration of the viral and bacterial group whereas these bars represent the mean body temperature of the two groups. The null hypothesis for this example states that the patients with a bacterial infection have the same mean CRP concentration and body temperature as the ones with a viral infection. Let's first calculate the means of the two variables within each group. The mean CRP concentration for the viral group is about 19.4, and the mean body temperature of this group is 38.2. In comparison, the patients with a bacterial infection have a mean CRP concentration of 41.1 and a mean body temperature of 
We would now like to test if there is a significant difference between the corresponding means for the two groups. We can plot the data like this and add the centroid for the viral group and the centroid for the bacterial group. The hoteling t-squared statistic is based on the Mahalanobis distance between the two group centroids. This means that the hoteling t-squared statistic takes into account the relationship between the dependent variables in its calculations. The hoteling t-squared test statistic is calculated by the following formula, where n1 and n2 are the sample sizes of the two groups and MD is the Mahalanobis distance between the distributions of the two groups. Once we have calculated the Hotelling's t-squared test statistic, we can use the following formula to calculate the f-statistic that can be used to compute the p-value. We'll come back to this formula later. The hardest part in these calculations is to calculate the squared Mahalanobis distance. Let's begin by calculating the square Mahalanobis distance between the two centroids. We can calculate the Mahalanobis distance between the two centroids with the following formula, where x represents the vector with the coordinates of the centroid for the first group, and y is the vector with the coordinates for the centroid of the second group. and S is the pooled within group covariance matrix. Let's first calculate the pooled within group covariance matrix. To calculate this matrix, we first calculate the covariance matrix for the virus group, and then for the bacteria group. Note that the values in these matrices have been rounded. Since the sample size are equal between the two groups, the pooled within group covariance matrix is simply the mean of these two covariance matrices. If the two groups have an unequal sample size, we should use the following equation to compute the weighted average of the two covariance matrices. Let's move the pooled within group covariance matrix up here. Then we calculate its inverse. These are the means of the variables for each group that we calculated earlier. We now have everything that we need to calculate the Mahalanobis distance between the two centroids. We plug in the coordinates of the centroid of the viral group, which represents the mean CRP and body temperature for the six patients with the viral infection. We also plug in the corresponding means for the bacterial group and the inverse of the pooled within group covariance matrix. After calculating the difference between the centroids and transposing the first vector, we can start with this matrix multiplication, which results in the following row vector. Multiplying the row vector by the column vector results in a value of 11.69. This value represents our squared Mahalanobis distance. We now have everything that we need to calculate the Hotelling's t-squared test statistic. We plug in the sample size of both groups, which is 6 in our example, and the squared Mahalanobis distance. If you do the math, we see that the Hotelling's t-squared test statistic is equal to 35.1. We'll now calculate the f-statistic, where n1 and n2 are the sample sizes of the two groups. p is the number of dependent variables, which is 2 in our example. And this is the Hotelling's t-squared test statistic. We plug in all the values and calculate the f-statistic to 15.8. We then use an f-distribution with the degrees of freedom equal to p 
and n plus n2 minus p minus 1. For our example, we will use an f distribution with the degrees of freedom 2 and 9. The area to the right hand side of 15.8 represents our p value for the test. By using a statistical software tool, the p value is computed to about 0.001. Since the p value is less than the general significance level of 0.05, we can reject the null hypothesis that states that the mean CRP and mean body temperature are equal among patients with viral and bacterial infections. By computing the hotelling's t-square, we got an f statistic of 15.78 and a p-value of 0.001. Note that we will got the same statistics by running a MANOVA. Also, the assumptions for the hotelling's t-square are the same as the ones we have discussed in the previous lecture about MANOVA. Since we rejected the null hypothesis of equal means, we might want to test if there is a difference between the means for the individual variables. For example, we could use a t-test to check if there is a significant difference in the mean CRP concentration between the two groups. And use a separate t-test to test if there is a significant difference in the mean body temperature between the two groups. Note that although there might be a significant difference between the two groups when we study both variables simultaneously, it might happen that we do not observe a difference between the two groups when we study the variable separately, as we discussed in the lecture about MANOVA. This was the end of this lecture about the hotelling's t-square.